Many people know Michael Jackson solely for his music and dance, and they think of him only as the king of pop. However, he was not just a master of music. He was also a master of disguise. In this video, we will delve into all the disguises Michael Jackson adopted from his youth until his death, and up to the present day, you will see his mastery in this area and be amazed by it. Michael often changed his appearance to escape the constant attention of fans and the media and to enjoy a normal life. He did not want to be recognized at concerts and cinemas. Although being a superstar had its advantages, it was sometimes challenging for Michael Jackson. He was so popular that every public visit had to be meticulously planned with tight security measures. Moreover, Jackson often locked himself in his hotel room to avoid the crowds that gathered just to see him. Therefore, whenever the star wanted to hide his identity, he would resort to disguises. The King of Pop used a wide variety of disguises throughout his life. Sometimes, it was to escape from his fans and sometimes, it was to approach them unnoticed. Once. Michael was seen in a record store disguised as a beggar, wearing a torn shirt, a pair of dirty shoes, false teeth, and an afro outfit. He also wanted to experience what it felt like to be in the audience. For all these reasons, he called upon Oscar, winning special effects artist Rick Baker to help him with his appearance. The disguises made Michael look so much older and so different that no one at the concerts could recognize him. After that, Michael appeared in public many times, enjoying the pleasure of anonymity through his disguises. So, Michael Jackson might have walked past you many times, but you never noticed. In 1979, Whilst in the UK, Michael Jackson dressed up as Chaplin for a photo shoot in the road where Chaplin once lived. Michael was taken to a local shop to buy the outfit and the famous black and white photos were taken by British photographer Tony Prime. Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie at the various in Los Angeles, California in 1980. Michael and Lionel Richie were very close friends. Their relationship started when Lionel's band was the warm-up for the Jackson 5 tour in 1972. At first glance, you might wonder who the man next to young actress Tatum O'Neill is. However, his eyes give him away. Beneath the meticulous disguise, there is 24-year-old Michael Jackson hoping to enjoy the concert in happy anonymity with his first girlfriend. Michael Jackson's first public appearance in an extensive disguise was in 1982, when he stepped out to attend a concert with his girlfriend, Tatum O'Neill. The photograph from 1982 documents the relationship between Tatum, who was 18 at the time, and Jackson. Michael Jackson has stated that his first real girlfriend was actress Tatum O'Neill, referring to her as my first love after Diana Ross. Years later, when this photograph resurfaced, Tatum told her friends, we were going to a cool and the gang concert, but Michael didn't want to be recognized. There's a special effects guy who can help. We had a great night. No one recognized us but we got some strange looks because he looked much older than me. Members of Jackson's team, including Oscar, winning special effects, artist Rick Baker, who worked on the Thriller video, estimated that the disguise cost thousands of dollars. They added, Michael loved it. He thought it was a lot of fun. Rick created this beard and did some work on Michael's lips. He also did makeup to darken his skin. Regarding her relationship with Michael, Tatum said he was a huge star. 
but it seemed like he hardly dated anyone and knew very little about life. Tatum and Jackson broke up shortly after this photo was taken, and Michael started dating Brooke Shields. Michael's brother, Germaine Jackson, has mentioned this disguise in his book, You Are Not Alone, saying the following. In the spring of 1986, I embarked on my precious moments tour across America, and one of the stops was at the Universal Amphitheater in Los Angeles. Deep down, I was hoping that Michael would come to see me, like the rest of the family, but I knew he was engrossed in his bad album. What I didn't know was that he wanted to attend the concert as a surprise, without causing a stir among the crowd. It's Jermaine's night, not mine, he told Harrison Funk. I was in my dressing room with my children, Autumn and Jermaine Jr., and I saw Harrison at the door with a slew of cameras hanging around his neck, accompanied by Kevin Wilson, son of comedian Flip Wilson. And this is Uncle Willie, Harrison said, introducing a pale-looking fan, about 40 years old, wearing a hat. I wasn't paying much attention because the concert was about to start, but I shook his hand and thanked him for coming. I am a big fan of your music, he told me. Thank you, I replied. Everyone burst into laughter so exaggeratedly that I looked behind me to see if someone was playing a joke on me, but there was no one. Jermaine, Harrison said, it's Michael. Uncle Willie is Michael. I looked again closely at Uncle Willie, and despite the thick makeup, his eyes were smiling. Oh, no, 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 no. I shouted. The disguise was so incredible that I am completely sure that when Michael looked in the mirror that night, he wondered who the hell was staring back at him. During the bad tour, this disguise, along with others, allowed him to blend in with the crowd and visit places like Vienna and Barcelona. In 1988, Michael Jackson went incognito to visit the Berlin Zoo, rendering himself unrecognizable. During this visit, Michael aimed to evade his fans in the media by donning a hat, glasses, false teeth, a fake mustache, a wig, and ordinary clothes that were a far cry from his typical stage costumes. Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley at Disney World 1994. Michael took Lisa Marie and her children, Benjamin and Danielle, to the Disney World Parks and Universal Studios in Florida. In 1994, Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley made a joint visit to Disney World. At this time, the couple was attracting intense media attention as they had just married a few months earlier in May 1994. This visit coincided with the early days of their marriage, when their relationship was a subject of global fascination. Photos and videos taken during their Disney World visit show the couple enjoying their time and visiting various attractions in the park. Michael and Lisa Marie were seen together in public numerous times during this period, further spotlighting their relationship. However, this visit also brought along speculations about the nature of their relationship. Some believed that such public outings were an effort to legitimize their relationship, while others thought that they were truly in love. Regardless, Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley's visit to Disney World remains a notable moment in the pop culture history of the 1990s. The couple stayed married for two years before divorcing in 1996. Michael Jackson was a great admirer of Charlie Chaplin. Approximately 16 years after his 1979 impersonation of Charlie Chaplin, Michael once again transformed into the character. Michael Jackson recorded one of his favorite songs, Smile for his 1995 album, History. Past, present, and future, book I. A huge fan of Chaplin's work, 
Michael paid tribute by dressing up as Chaplin's famous character, the Little Tramp, during a photo shoot. The recording of Smile was planned to be the album's final single. However, the release was canceled, leading to the circulation of a few rare promotional copies. On the cover design, Michael is seen reenacting a scene from Chaplin's classic 1921 film, The Kid, dressed as the Little Tramp. Michael held a deep admiration for Chaplin and even visited Charlie Chaplin's widow, Una Chaplin, during his Bad World tour. In the late 1980s, Jackson became friends with the Chaplin family and recorded a cover of Chaplin's enduringly popular song, Smile. Jackson took great pleasure in dining with the Chaplin family, playing in the garden with Chaplin's children, and exploring the treasures of Chaplin's personal film archive at the Chaplin Museum in his Swiss mansion. Rumors suggest that during Charlie's final years, he hosted many friends at his Manoir de Bon Estate in Switzerland, including Marlon Brando, Truman Capote, and Michael Jackson. However, if they had met, it would not have remained a secret, and there would be photographs. While there are existing photos of Michael with Charlie's family, there are none with Charlie himself, casting doubt on the claim. Therefore, the claim probably does not reflect the truth. In 1996, Michael Jackson transformed into the character of the mayor for his short film Ghosts. This short film was created to promote Michael Jackson's history album and was directed by Stan Winston. The film narrates the story of the residents of a town who are frightened by a character named Maestro portrayed by Michael Jackson and attempt to drive him out of the town. In the film, Michael Jackson played not only the character of Maestro, but also the town's mayor and several other characters. For the role of the mayor, Michael underwent a complete transformation using prosthetic makeup and costumes. The character of the mayor was depicted as an overweight white man, and Michael's performance in this role was highly praised by audiences and critics alike. The Ghosts short film is considered an example of Michael Jackson's innovative and boundary, pushing approach to his art. The special effects, makeup, and dance choreography showcased in the film are indicative of his exceptional talent and passion for his art. Additionally, the film is seen as a work in which Michael Jackson addressed some personal themes from his own life, portraying a character who is misunderstood and ostracized by society. The film serves as an impressive example of Michael Jackson's versatility as an artist and his ability to embody different characters. In conclusion, Michael Jackson has etched himself into memory not only with his musical genius, but also with his unique and daring disguises. These wild disguises not only showcase his talent and passion for his art, but also reflect his fondness for freedom and his desire to remain anonymous away from the cameras and spotlight. Through these disguises, Michael was able to walk the streets like an ordinary person, momentarily escaping the adoration of his fans and the relentless pursuit of the media. These adventures prove that he was a legend not just on stage, but in all aspects of life. Michael Jackson's wild disguises allow us to get to know his art and personality more closely, while also celebrating his fun and free spirit. This demonstrates that he was an artist who inspired not just with his music, but also with his outlook on life. Although Michael officially left us in 2009, Considering his desire to escape the media and his ability to disguise himself, fans of Michael still believe that he has continued his life away from the media in various disguises such as Dave Dave, Jack Crooner, and The Green Man since 2009. Now, let's move on to the second half 
of Michael Jackson's life, divided into before and after his death. Hold on tight. The disguises in this part are even more exciting. Let's go back to three years before his death without moving past the date of his death. This time, Jackson is disguising himself as a woman. Back in 2006, disguising himself proved to be quite a challenge for Michael Jackson. Although a large, floppy sun hat might have concealed his face, the three-inch pointed heels, skinny-fit women's jeans, and a fluorescent orange handbag did little to help him maintain anonymity. The 48-year-old singer made his typically flamboyant appearance in S. Tropez during his latest trip abroad. At that time, Jackson was vacationing on the French Riviera, accompanied by his three young children. It was understood that the star was in the south of France as a guest of his friend and benefactor, Prince Al-Walid, a nephew of Saudi Arabia's King Fahd, on his private yacht, Kingdom Five at Yacht. Kingdom Five Acre. Michael Jackson was captured dressed in a floppy hat, sunglasses, and even a pair of heels. After navigating through the back streets of the village, a weary looking Jackson took a moment to rest at the roadside, seeking shelter from the 28 degree heat. Now it's 2009. Michael Jackson has passed away and a memorial service is being held. However, among the audience, there is a mysterious blonde woman. She strikingly resembles the female disguise that Jackson himself had donned back in 2006. Moreover, there are claims that the person she is holding hands with is one of Jackson's former bodyguards. Additionally, the woman has a noticeable Adam's apple, a laryngeal prominence typically found in men. Black strands of hair are also visible underneath her blonde hair. After the ceremony, take a moment to notice the way Michael's sister, Janet, looks at the woman. But wait, before making a decision, take a look at the man with the hat on the right side of the bodyguard. As you know, Michael is a very intelligent person. On the left side of the bodyguard, there is a blonde woman resembling Michael, while on the right side, there is a mysterious man with a hat. Wait a minute, doesn't this man bear a striking resemblance to Michael's disguise back in 1994? Michael has probably used one of these two disguises to divert people's attention. Which one do you think is Michael? According to the records, the Dave Dave incident is the greatest evidence that Michael Jackson is alive. After this incident, millions of Michael Jackson fans began to believe that Michael Jackson was alive. On September 3, 2009, it was time for Dave to pay off this debt. On the day of Michael's burial, which took place three months after the date of his death, there was a special guest on Larry King's program on CNN. Michael's close friend Dave Dave was a guest of Larry King to talk about his friend Michael, but there was something interesting going on. Michael's fans who were watching the live broadcast were getting suspicious. Most fans thought that the person on the program was definitely Michael Jackson. They were not wrong in their thinking. Because there was an obvious difference between the real Dave and the person on the program. Their facial expressions, shoulder width, voice, and eyes were very different.
myself from the confines of my father's criminality. To the yeah. media about he, he is Apparently, a criminal and he information was leaked. Uh, myself from the confines of my father's criminality. Yeah. He, he is a criminal and he... Uh, There's crowds and bumper to bumper cars and... It's all over there. It's, the girl is mine and, you know, this and that. There's crowds and bumper to bumper cars and... It's all over there. It's, the girl is mine and, you know, this and that. This tree that I have at Neverland. And brought me up to Neverland. Neverland. It's Neverland. Neverland. It's Neverland. Neverland. It's Neverland. And, uh... And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, my shoulder, my shoulder, learned about me and know about me from a distance. He heard about me and he had contacted me and wanted to meet me. Learned about me and know about me from a distance. He heard about me and he had contacted me. Learned about me and know about me from a distance. He heard about me and he had contacted me. Kids, it was kind Bikimia of kids. The this is one of visit many. to his Encino because house. I wanted to have a place to, and it was kept a secret that I could create my mother. everything and that I that I, I never had as a child. So you see rides, a, you see animals, is, there's a movie a theater. Per se, I was always on tour, always loved his music. traveling, you know, and, and uh, my mother I never got a chance to do those things. So I compensated, but and there's I crowds and bumper to bumper cars, and, and there were all so I create my world behind my gates. Oh, Everything that I love mind. is behind those gates. You know, this and that. His eyes looked a lot like Michael Jackson's. He sounded just like Michael Jackson. His fans were starting to believe that Michael Jackson was alive now. That's exactly what Michael wanted. Because Michael's fans were very upset about Michael's death. There were even reports that some of his fans had ended their own lives. Michael was on live TV doing crazy action. He wanted to relieve their sadness by giving a message to his fans that he was alive. That's why he was looking nervously at the camera as if he was saying, I'm here. I'm alive. He had no doubt that his fans would recognize him. Millions of his fans after. This incident said that they started to believe Michael is alive after this. But why did Michael use Dave's disguise for this? Because Michael also wanted to give a message to his enemies. He wanted to say to those who wanted to kill and defame him, Here I am. Dave's face was good for a disguise. But the important thing was not Dave's face, but his past. The message that Michael wanted to give was, those who wanted to defame him were his enemies, just like how Dave's father is an enemy to Dave. And in this situation, Dave Dave was Michael. So his enemies wanted to destroy him, but he miraculously survived. He was undefeated. Dave Dave got rid of his evil father and Michael got rid of his enemies. Dave Dave had given Michael his ID for one day. Because Michael was his friend, just like he said, the main message they wanted to give was very big. There were more important things in life than money, like friendship and loyalty. There was a greater power in life than evil, like good. Evil runs sprints. But goodness runs marathons, and goodness will win this marathon. Dave Dave passed away in 2018 at the age of 42 due to pneumonia. He left behind a great friendship, a great loyalty, a great secret, because he was a beautiful friend, a wonderful confidant. About eight months after Michael Jackson's death, We Are the World's 25th Year Special Anniversary Song with more than 80 artists, including Justin Bieber, on February 1, 2010, was published. And there was a man with a green mask at the minute 728. Let's see, who is this person in the green mask? Does it look familiar to you? Have you ever noticed the old man who appeared in the Hollywood Tonight clip that aired in March 2011 before? This old man, who was quite mobile for his age, was dancing quite well. 
Michael was again trying to sneak into his clips to give us the message that he was alive. On December 1, 2011, Michael Jackson's family was invited to the X Factor USA competition. Michael's brothers Jackie, Tito, and Marlon, as well as Michael's mother, Catherine and Michael's children, Prince, Paris, and Blanket, were among the spectators at the competition. There was another person among the audience who attracted attention. Did the man in the hat who is right behind Michael's mother Catherine look familiar to you from somewhere? Yes, the master of disguise, Michael Jackson. Many family members attended the wedding of Siggy Jackson, the son of Michael Jackson's niece, Jackie Jackson, which took place in 2017. and attracted attention by entering a similar mayor disguise that he had previously entered in his ghost clip. Michael watched his daughter Paris and son Prince in the background. Is he uh, no longer with us? No, he's alive. He lives here with me. He developed a rare skin condition. He can no longer go in the sunlight. You must get depressed. It's not easy. But who knows? Maybe one day we'll get a great album out of it. A masterpiece. Bill Hader. Any other questions for Bill? Cynthia? I don't know who that guy was I hugged, but it was the guy from Atlanta. Nobody saw that. He, he showed up.
In 2015, Michael Jackson's son, Prince Jackson, and Omar Bhatti, who grew up next to Michael, held a boat party. It was very hot, and everyone was walking around in short sleeve t shirts. But one of them was standing in a long sleeve shirt, tie, trousers, and a fedora. As you know, Michael Jackson was allergic to the sun and could not stand in the sun without a hat and an umbrella. Anyway, you already know that we believe that Michael is Jack Crooner. In this video, we will talk about the reasons rather than the evidence. If you have not watched the evidence before, or if this is the first time you are hearing about this incident, you can watch our video titled 13 Proofs That Jack Crooner Is Michael Jackson. Where were we? The person on the boat looked mysterious with his clothes, and when we investigated the person, we found out that he was Michael Jackson's former doctor, Alamorad Farshian. But the person on the boat had no resemblance to Alamorad. Alamorad changed his name and style after the date of Michael's death and became interested in the song and film industry. His new name was Jack Crooner and Michael was collecting donations from his fans for people in need of help. He had set up a charity foundation called Heal the Earth. I have explained the matter to you in summary so far. So why would Michael want to disguise himself as Jack Crooner? We need to change the question a little here. Why did Michael have to disguise himself as Jack Crooner? Yes, there was more of a necessity here than a wish. Because Michael needed an inconspicuous character to be in touch with his children and family. At the same time, this character should have had a small connection with the family, so that he should not attract the suspicion of the media or fans because of his closeness to the family. Since Jack was Michael's former doctor, it was very natural for him to meet with the family occasionally. No one would question that. But unfortunately, this was noticed by us. Because Michael's sensitivity to the sun kept him from wearing revealing clothes, and he was constantly walking around with glasses to avoid showing his eyes. And although he was wearing a disguise, he couldn't get rid of his style. For example, his fedora was always on his head. He used to smoke on the boat just to avoid media attention because everyone knew that Michael didn't smoke, but because Michael could smoke when portraying a character. So just because Jack was smoking a cigarette wouldn't prove that he wasn't Michael. Anyway, with the identity of Jack Crooner, Michael was able to be together with his children and family, and under the name of No Name, he was able to fulfill his dreams in the film and music industry. This was his biggest project. The name of his project was Death Hoax, and Jack Crooner was the biggest role he played. He really wanted to portray the role of Spider-Man, but they wouldn't let him do it. So he wanted to create his own character and show his acting talent. With the biggest project in the world, with the biggest acting in the world, the role of playing a doctor of a pop star who faked his death was the most different and the most difficult acting project. When he comes back, he can make a big noise with the role of Jack Crooner when he shoots a movie where he will show behind the scenes all the disguises he entered after faking his death. So how could Michael disguise himself as Jack Crooner? Is he using such a professional mask? First of all, it should be said that the mask is not as professional as you might think. Yes, of course, we are talking about a man who could get into professional disguise even in 1996. This era's makeup opportunities are much greater. Disguising is much easier now. The Jack Crooner character is very similar to the mayor disguise that Michael entered in the Ghost movie. And this must be a message from Michael for us.
I told you guys that the mask is not very professional because Jack performs his broadcasts in a very dark studio so that traces of his mask are not obvious because he thought that the darkness could hide mistakes. But even though he broadcasts in a dark environment, the mask marks are sometimes clearly visible. Maybe he's making these mistakes to show his fans that he's alive. What do you think? Watch the video of him pinching his cheek one more time. He actually tried to prove that his cheek was an elastic mask when he was trying to prove he was not Michael. Have you noticed? So Michael, on the one hand, denies that he is Michael. On the other hand, he is trying to show his real fans that he is Michael. So in short, it is very possible that Jack Crooner can sometimes disguise himself as Michael. And nowadays, with these technological and makeup possibilities, a master of disguise such as Michael Jackson has many reasons to be in a disguise that he wants. It can't be impossible for him to masquerade as anyone he wants. Michael had to disguise himself as Jack in order to be able to spend time with his children and family and fulfill his dreams under the name No Name. To see the evidence that Jack Crooner is Michael, you should watch our video titled 13 Proofs That Jack Crooner Is Michael Jackson. And in it, he is present at the event where Michael's son, Prince Jackson, addresses Jack as Michael. So be sure to watch it. These videos are done with long-term efforts. In this context, your support is very important to me. Remember that your donations motivate me. To provide support, click on the thanks button at the bottom of the video and you can make a donation. Besides, this way, your comment will stand out and I will be able to respond to you quickly. I love you all and hope to see you in our next video. Goodbye.